are in the process of transforming ourselves and the world vicariously and participatively and collaboratively, <clears throat> all simultaneously. Since we are practicing in this process a dynamic of recursive learning, we're going back to this very simple foundational dynamic energetic process of the taproot so that we can rebuild your understandings at the level of the root chakra of precisely when, where, how, and why it operates so that you gain increased capacity to operate sovereignly in the midst of it, to walk through it unscathed, to, to not be harmed, to not be entrained, triggered, fed upon, to be able to be uh, in the midst of the, the jungle of the tribe and, and successfully navigate it, facilitate the evolution of the tribe, no matter what, and to do so with uh, inner peace, equanimity, without attachment or aversion, with, without judgment, criticism, or victim, perpetrator, rescue, or dynamics being triggered in your system, without feeling less than in the process, not feeling alone or outside, and not feeling unconnected or non-participative in the dynamic of life on this planet that is so tribalized, so traditionally, historically, culturally revivified. We would, we're contemplating saying informed. In a way, we could say we're informed by tradition and tribe. And that said, that is more of just a replication of the simulacra of history. So we would say, uh, we are influenced by tribe. We not, need not be defined by it. We need not be defined by others' resonance with taproot dynamics. We need not be entrained. We need not be defined at our foundation decision-making levels by profit motive or control or power or status or accumulation <clears throat> or voracious feeding on the environment to the point of the death of the environment. We, humanity need not operate as a, 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 a parasite on the planet. We can operate symbiotically. Uh, we, can, we can serve the planet while it serves us rather than us unilaterally feeding upon it and, and then corrupting it and polluting it. That requires a foundational shift, a foundational change in perspective, a foundational redefinition of what it means to be a human being and what it means to be a society, a culture, a tribe, or a nation, or a company, or a corporation. That granular, detailed, absolutely th thorough process of transformation and transmutation of the past is challenging because there is an energy at the base of it that we would refer to as the taproot that is trying to define anything and everything that we co-create together in, in taproot terms, in voracious feeding terms, in blind sociopathically, narcissistically desire fulfilling terms and in, in dyna dualistic dynamics of attachment and aversion, right, wrong, good, bad, true, false, safe, unsafe, rather than via the, the compass heading of the light of spirit as, as our navigational mechanism and developmental paradigm and trajectory defining influence. Humanity has destroyed for the sake of destruction, just to see whether, if we could do it. 
little children will uh, smash things, anthills, uh, or, or break things just to prove that they can do it. Of course, more often males than females, that said, still it happens throughout humanity. The feminine can try to damage or destroy things in order to prove it has power, just perhaps in different ways, perhaps not as physically. <clears throat> uh, the, the understanding that these, these currents of destructive intention flow through the substrata of the tribal process, often unseen and unrealized, for the domino effects that they create in our decision-making and our action-taking is Im important, it's imperative. We cannot choose to operate in, some, in ways that are not destructive unless and until we understand the dynamics of our system that are destructive or have been destructive or operate in destructive ways or hold it destructive intentions, even if that destructive dynamic is, is not out of anger or rage or hatred, it's, even if it's out of cold indifference or ignorance. We simply don't care. We don't understand how to care. So this upwelling of the taproot doesn't know how to care. And it doesn't know, thus it can't make discerning, loving, caring, compassionate decisions or choices. The grounding of the light means the grounding of love into all dimensions of life. It means the grounding of discipline, mature spiritual care, care of, about the effect and meaning and implication of our actions and our choices in the world. A predator doesn't know how to care about its prey. Not truly, they might say, well, a, a cheetah will chase down a, an antelope and strike it at such speed that the antelope is shocked likely into death, even if the cheetah didn't close its teeth on the throat of its prey and suffocate it. And you could say that that's a form of caring, as caring as a predator can be. Uh, that 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 dynamic of, of, of a crocodile eating a, a wildebeest and dragging it underwater quickly to suffocate it is a dynamic of care. And we would suggest that that's the lower spectrum of care. That's the least, that's the, the baseline that we would uh, hope that any being would operate from. Paradoxically, humanity has been known to, to torture humanity, not simply to kill or destroy other human beings, to torture them. That, that tendency is bereft of care, love, kindness, and compassion. It is antithetical to it. So if we want to make it into a future where everyone is recognizably equal and valid and valued and loved and served and, and supported and healed, we must be willing to ground that love and care in all of the darkest corners of prior human traditional tribal dynamics, destructive dynamics and taproot dynamics. And that means Willingness to have the courage to carry that light of love into the darkest places that there are in this world. And not to do it just one time, to do it every day. And to hold that intention every day. And to ensure that that delivery of the light to the, these areas of ignorance or darkness or hatred or fear or, or simple sociopathic uncaring in the world, that, that delivery of light occurs every day. And at scale, and via a methodical system, therefore the social movement engine, to shine light everywhere all the time.
consistently in a sustained way, because without it, without adequate light in any environment, people don't tend to make wise decisions. They trip over the coffee table or they bump into each other or they uh, cut themselves on sharp objects in the dark and not un they don't understand when, where, how, and why it occurred. With enough light, we get wise decision-making, discernment. We, we attain the capacity to be caring and disciplined and to serve each other consistently. So we have, as we've stated before, developed adaptive technologies that were meant to bring us comfort and safety and health and fun and joy. Simultaneous to that process of, of generating those adaptive technologies, the, the background energy of the taproot has operated. And so we've seen uh, knowledge, technology and understanding being utilized for constructive healthy purposes and for very destructive and unhealthy purposes or destructive uh, unhealthy purposes without the intention to destroy. We simply didn't know any better. We've, we have been ignorant of what it means to pollute our world until that pollution has come back to our doorstep until it has created global warming as a karmic cycle, returning to us that which we have done and chosen in the past in, in a specific way, very carefully crafted, designed, intelligent way to allow us to learn our way through and out of those prior tendencies and those prior ignorances. So our attachment to what might be termed the individually and tribally known and familiar and the dysfunctional historical life process of humanity and to feed on other species due to narcissism, ignorance, and obscuration must be rectified. We must choose otherwise intentionally, intelligently, consciously, and discerningly, and wisely. In that dynamic, there will be projective fear of, of pain and lack and loss, and we will meet our addictive tendencies and drives for unnecessary accumulation and consumption and experiential self-satisfaction of the ego that has led to ecosystem imbalances. Narcissistic willingness to destroy anything in our living ecosystem simply so that we could remain in power and continue to feed on sensory inputs, not just food, pleasure, fun, excitement, enthusiasm, having a good time becoming wealthy and powerful, getting recognition, getting status, social process as an addictive dynamic of tribe. It's imperative to understand the taproot process, while it has been driving us to survive, sees itself as existing beyond any of us as individuals. It is parasitic in its process. It is willing to kill its host. It doesn't care whether you live or die. It doesn't care whether your family or your future generations live or die. It does want the species to continue. And it is not able to honor any individual or any nation or any people, religion or culture or gender or race. These are, we're being very definitive today. We apologize for, for any, in, for this overt directness. We feel that it's necessary for it to be understood profoundly enough to be acted from intelligently and consistently. If these understandings are not grounded in our systems, 
we will falter. We will become distracted. We will seek pleasure in order to blind us to the pain and suffering of the current world and future generations that we will be creating via our indifference. There, are, there is a generation of children that are frightened for their future. They're angry and hurt by the way earlier generations have misused the planet. They are angry and hurt that we have not cared enough and loved them well enough to build a world that will work for the future, for their future. They're afraid they don't see a way forward. They don't know which way to go. They need support, they need guidance, they need care, they need love, they need wisdom. It's incumbent upon us to embody that in order to support their process, in order not to fail them as parents or as the mature generation of this world or as stewards of their future. That requires a choice to be made within our systems to say, I choose to do what is necessary to bring into this world a new life process that works. I choose to commit to that. I choose to ensure that that happens and that it happens in as timely a manner as is required to not have the world be overwhelmed by the ignorant trajectory of, of narcissism and taproot feeding that has generated climate change. I choose to endure that which must be endured in order for that shift in consciousness, that transformation of understanding throughout all of humanity to occur. This, this is a suggestion. It's an option. It's a possibility. It's something we would suggest is a, a worthy thing to entertain within your systems. It is a service that you can offer to humanity that virtually no one else has the capacity to offer in a complete way.